In this video, we're going to talk about how to deal with spinal instability, symptoms, and treatments. Are you unsteady on your feet or have an achy lower back that just isn't quite right and it won't quit? It might not be you just getting older, it might be spinal instability. And sometimes ignoring these symptoms might just result in more pain. So in this video, I'm going to break it down for you on what spinal instability is, how to spot it, and what treatments actually work. I'm Dr. Deep T. Jane, and I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon. I've helped hundreds, if not thousands, of patients regain stability and avoid surgery, and some I have operated on. If you're dealing with recurrent pain and postural issues, you're in the right place. Hit subscribe now so you never miss evidence-based tips to keep your spine supported and strong. So first, let's start out by talking about what is spinal instability. Well, it was first defined by Punjabi and White, and this is a definition that we use frequently. And it is the body's ability, the spine's ability to withstand physiologic load without neurologic symptoms, extreme pain, or deformity. But what does that mean in real life? It means that the spine is moving in an abnormal way that it shouldn't move. And this can be for a variety of different reasons. Sometimes the ligaments and the muscles or the bone isn't doing its job properly. This extra movement can cause extra pressure on the nerves or just irritate the nerves because the motion is not normal. This can trigger muscle spasms, can trigger nerve pain, and cause that sharp uh, shooting pain that you might feel that's burning down your legs. So are you wondering if this might be your issue? Symptoms of spinal instability may include back pain that comes and goes, a feeling of weakness or giving out, pain that worsens with standing or with certain movements in particular, sudden twinges or locking sensations in your back, and then also the nerve-related symptoms, pain going down your buttocks and the thighs. Um, and so what, what causes it? As I mentioned, it can be caused by a number of different things. Um, the most common that I see in my office is due to degeneration, wear and tear over time, arthritis. Um, so that's the most common reason I see. Trauma can also cause spinal instability if there's a fracture that makes the spine susceptible to moving in certain ways uh, that would not be normal. Also, surgeries like having a prior lumbar decompression, like a laminectomy, for example, that can contribute to spinal instability. We know that the facet joints, the small joints in the back of the spine, are very important for spinal stability. And so if you've had a laminectomy in the past and too much bone was taken or too much of the facet joint was taken, that can actually also result in spinal instability. How do we diagnose it? Well, it's most um, easily diagnosed, I think, on x-rays. And so there are what we call static x-rays, in other words, just standing lumbar x-rays. And sometimes you can see um, uh, clues that the spine isn't moving in the right way on, on those x-rays. Uh, we also get flexion extension x-rays. That's an x-ray with the body, with the spine flexed forward and an x-ray taken there, and the spine extended backwards and an x-ray taken there. And because we're taking x-rays in two different body positions, that allows us to see if there's any abnormal motion or movement um, in those x-rays, and they can be very, very helpful. So how do we treat spinal instability? Well, similarly, as you might have heard in some of my other videos, is that there are non-operative care options and operative care options. In a lot of cases, we don't end up operating. Physical therapy focused on core strengthening, postural retraining, and motor control can substantially reduce symptoms. Bracing can be useful sometimes. I do caution against too much bracing because it can actually uh, make the muscles not work, and we want those muscles to work. The goal is long-term muscle support, not dependency. And so when do we consider surgery? Um, if non-operative care options don't help with the pain and you might have persistent symptoms, that's when we can talk about doing an operation. Typically, if someone has spinal instability, that kind of operation involves a fusion because we need the bones to stop moving in that abnormal way. But as I mentioned, this is a last resort option. This is if the non-operative things don't work.
So what are some everyday tips for managing instability? You can protect your spine every day by avoiding repetitive movements of bending and twisting, practicing good ergonomics at work, strengthening the deep core muscles regularly, and staying mindful of your posture, especially when sitting for long periods of time. So let's recap. Spinal instability can cause pain, weakness, and nerve symptoms. It can be due to a number of different factors, including arthritis and aging, weak support structures, or an injury like trauma. Non-surgical care can be very helpful, and this includes things like physical therapy, as well as a few other things. Um, And knowing when to seek medical help is key to preventing um, long-term symptoms, keeping in mind that surgery may be an option down the road. So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone you might be who you know might be struggling. Drop a comment if you've dealt with spinal instability. I'd love to hear your story and what's helped you most.